pray with me, everyone. So much love. Lord, thank you for calling us to a greater yes, dear Lord. Yes. We thank you for so many things, dear Lord. We thank you for the privilege of being here this morning. We thank you for hearing your word, dear Lord. Lord, speak to the congregation through me. Your words only, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As you guys heard this morning, the, today's topic is finding your greater yes through pain and suffering. Um, I want to um, have two of my brothers in Christ come up this morning. Uh, first, Evan's going to be reading from James 1 through 12, and then Matt's going to read through 12 through 15. Evan? You can, you can, from your, from your appeal, you can actually uh, come up, so whatever you want to do, whatever's more comfortable. Okay. <laughs> James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the twelve tribes scattered among the nations of Greece. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trial of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, and not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. He gives generous, generously to all without, without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. But the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he will pass away with a wild flower. But the sun rises and scorching heat and glitters the plant, the rocky falls and his beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even when he, even while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I want to say... In Joshua, Moses is dead. He's gone. The Lord asked Joshua to step forward to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Joshua says, Me, Lord? Moses was your sage, dear Lord. Moses was a man that actually did everything you wanted him to do, be everything that you wanted him to be. Who else can actually lead? these people. Surely not I, Joshua said. God said, don't worry Joshua, I will give you some things to actually take care of that so you'll be able to lead. Only thing I want you to do is to be in my word, be in my presence all the time. Okay? He asked Joshua, take up your cross and go with me. But I'm going to give you two things. But two things you have to have. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. I don't know if any of you have read the book on um, Courageous, the movie. Okay. I want to read some, a short passage in that to set another scene for you. Moses is dead. The entire nation of Israel was shocked. The holy, powerful sage that had led them 40 years, miraculously, through Egypt. Now he was gone, and the mass group of people were struck precariously in the wilderness in desperate need of a new leader. New leader. God turned to Joshua and told him he w it was now his job to lead. Imagine how afraid and unprepared he must have felt for this task. No one could be a leader like Moses, yet Joshua, God laid out a clear leadership path that would set Joshua up for incredible success. 
He promised him four spiritual resources to help him lead. Four resources that would also be available for God's children, you and I. The first one was God's authority, okay? Gave him the authority to cross the Jordan. The second one with God was God's word. He told him to meditate on God's word day and night, Amen. his people day and night. The third was to be in my presence, be in God's presence all the time, constantly. Just think about me. The fourth was his people. The people would give him the ability to lead. And several times in the midst of, his, uh, of this charge to leadership, God encouraged Joshua with the same defined challenges. He repeated the characters, the key characters that would hold up his mantle of leadership. Together, again and again, Joshua heard, be strong and courageous. This was his leadership model, the code, his rally card. When God wanted Joshua to hear these words so many times because he knew that leaders tend to become overwhelming, overwhelmed and afraid and passive, he knew strength and, courageous, and, strength and courage would fundamentally, in, were the fundamental ingredients to become the, leaders, the leader the man should be. Listen to this, people. Leaders are, be, are, leaders are not normal leaders. They be, they're, no long, they're no more smarter than we are, no more talented we are, no more organized than, than those around them. Not because they are tall, wealthy, or muscular. Leaders are the ones who take courage. Regardless of what's going on around them, they repeatedly exercise courage to step up, to use their influence to move others in the right direction. People will not follow even a leader that doesn't, that e e people will follow a leader that doesn't even have it together, okay? But people won't follow a leader that does not have any courage. I have a friend that wrote a book, Finding Your Greater Yes. Um, I was supposed to help him write his second book and because of reasons, uh, I just couldn't do that. But Dr. Dan Arison from uh, People Matters, he runs uh, that organization, um, was fired from his first three jobs out of ministry. He got out of college, he got out of seminary, and he was fired three straight times. He said, God, what is this? He said, I can't do anything right. So he packed up his, he was going to pack up his bags, but someone told him, hey, you know what? Before you do that, come to this seminar in uh, Modesto, California, and actually, uh, See what, see what you uh, think, and maybe you'll get a word. He went to this seminar. It was unbelievable for him. It changed his life. He went back to the East Coast, packed up his wife, his daughter, and moved out west. He, in, through this seminar, he found his greater yes. And it was because that he listened to what God had to offer to him wasn't because he thought that hey you know what this is a, this wasn't working i'm just gonna go i'm gonna run no he meditated on god's word and he found his greater yes that's what we have to do people in order to find our greater yes we have to understand that there's no one no one but god that's gonna have our backs in everything that we do Amen. we meditate on his word we take his authority we take, his, we take the people that are around us that have our backs, and we use that to find our greater yes. This actually helps out in families, in fathers, when they lead their families. So many families fall apart because us as men, we fail our wives, we fail our children. We fail, we don't take the mantle. When things go wrong, we let our wives lead, we set back. And we wanna know, we wanna know why the marriage didn't work. We're driving the bus, guys. Right. They're not driving the bus. God gave us our wives to be supportive to us. One of the reasons why that happened is because Adam did what he did in the garden. Instead of stepping up and slapping the serpent away and said, get away from her, 
he sat back, let his wife eat the apple, and just didn't do anything. God asked him, asked him, where were you? He was there. He was right next to her and did not do anything about it. We can't do that, guys. We have to step up, step out, take what the Lord has given us, and find our greater yes. Anybody in leadership will tell you that they have not cornered the market on leadership. Half of them don't know what they're doing. It's the people around them that make it so they can lead the right way. And some, some of us listen to the wrong people. Some of us think we've got it cornered. But most of the time, we forget who has our back. Right. Who knows our destiny? Who has us and knows exactly where we're going yeah we'll have detours in the road there's certain things that'll happen and but these things happen for a reason Amen. they don't happen because they just happen they happen because God knows what we're doing pastor has preached many many times God knows exactly how many hairs are on your head knows exactly what you call for we're not a number guys we know exactly why we're here but are we going to find our greater yes take that yes take up our cross and move forward in scripture we talk they talk about uh, this older man at uh, uh, Bethesda one of the pools that Jesus had actually um, actually uh, uh, was there for 38 years this man went to this pool sat on the side of the pool with his with his mat and was trying to get into the pool to be to be to be helped to be helped to be cured and he never could make it every time the wave and the water came up somebody else jumped in front of him scripture says and he never made it jesus said to the man take up your mat and follow me before you knew it he took up his mat and followed now the scribes and everybody wanted to know why this person was doing this on the Sabbath. You don't do anything on the Sabbath. Not supposed to. We won't get legalistic about that because we have a class on Wednesday night that we're trying to figure out. Do we worship on the Sabbath only? Do we go to, go to work on the Sabbath? What do we do? You know, we're in the middle of trying to figure that one out <laughs> right now, you know. But Seventh-day Adventist tells us they worship that Saturday okay and we all know that God worked for seven days and then took a break okay so we won't get caught into that but we do know that what our destiny is will we continue to listen to what our destiny beholds we will will we continue to allow Christ to work in our lives will we do what we're called to do as leaders, as people in ministry, as just people that, that, that just are out there and are trying to figure it out. You got to listen to somebody, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm listening to the man upstairs. <laughs> I'm not listening to the guy on the street corner that's telling me, oh, yeah, come on, man, just come with me. We'll take care. We got you. You got you, and you know what? Here's a little something over here. We'll figure you, you can help you figure it out. No, thank you. <laughs> For years, I've been in uh, middle management, uh, trying to actually get into senior management. For some apparent reason, they've allowed me to go just so far, and then all of a sudden, slap you down. Now you can't go any further than that. Um, my wife and I have traveled uh, the East Coast together the same time I was in middle management and I would actually get to the second in charge but when it came to first in charge can't happen I said to Amy I said you know what is it uh, is it my color what is it she always told me you know is don't worry about it just keep doing what you're doing be the man that your God tells you to be and he will give you your greater yes so I don't worry about it anymore. Still to this day, I'm still second in charge. <laughs> I can't crack that ceiling. But you know what? 
I'm not worried about it anymore. I found my greater yes, and I want to continue to find my greater yes through Jesus Christ. You know, and there's a song that we have uh, called Lean On Me, and I've just learned to lean on Christ whatever I do. No matter what, no matter where I go, I lean on Him, and leaning on Him will give me my greater yes. So again, I want you to just meditate on this song that I'm going to play, and then I'm going to ask Pastor to come up and give the benediction. Thank you. As a pastor, leadership is, is, is difficult. You get, you get involved in, in something that is bigger than you. Amen? In your Christian walk, your Christian walk is bigger than you. Amen? But in order to get one level to the next, from one step to the next, you've got to have that great yes inside you. Because there are many times, church, as a pastor, you feel like you're, you're at the bottom, it, you get beat up, you say, you know what, you're just tired, but God says, where is that greater yes? Where is that greater why in what you're doing? And we push, and we push, and we push. Same thing with your call. Each and every one of us in this place has a greater yes. But you've got to find that. You know, I hear a lot of excuses, but you know, pastor, I don't have this, and I don't have this, and I don't have this, and I don't have this time. And, Listen, the enemy is going to give you so many excuses to why you can't do something. It, it, it's crazy. But the Lord said to me this year, for me, me personally, he says, you need to block out all the voices that are coming at you. He says, you need to focus on my voice. Because see, when we allow other voices to come in, it kind of skews what God is trying to tell you. And like, I'm kind of a person that is, is, is I, I want to make sure that you guys are happy, make sure you're moving in the right direction. But God says, you know what? Some of the decisions you're going to make, I'm not going to make people happy. Guess what? Too bad. You listen to me. And the church moves forward. See, that's your greater yes. Is you, 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 can't, you can't please everyone. And some of you have calls on your life that you know that are there, but other people are holding you back. But you know where you need to be, but you're never going to get there unless you have a greater yes and a greater why behind you. Does that make sense? Yes. I have to have a greater yes, church. To move this church forward, it's not me. It's him. But I have to have a greater why. Yes. The greater why is to reach the unreached out there. It's to raise you guys up, to strengthen you. What Andre was talking about, you know, about him hitting a plateau. Sometimes God has you at a plateau because he wants you to go deeper in him. Amen? Because see, if we choose the wrong apple, remember I talked to you so many times? Oh, the apple looks good. That promotion looks really good. That money looks really good. That position in North Carolina looks really good. But God says, don't choose the wrong apple. Because ultimately, it's following after Him. That gives you your greater yes. That gives you your greater purpose. That gives you your greater joy. See, we struggle and we battle. But the battle is His. But the joy that we get to see what God is doing is insurmountable. But each of you, church, has a great yes inside you. You just have to decide how you're going to answer it or you're going to let it stay dormant. Because the, let me tell you something. It will, the Holy Spirit is like a big bull. When he grabs a hold of you, he ain't letting go. You can run and you can drag him behind you, but he's got you right in the bottom. And he's not going to let you go. Because there's a great yes for each and every one of us. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And I know that some of you have it because some of you have said, Pastor, God is showing me this. Well, guess what? Stop looking at the picture and stop getting involved in it. Mm. Let your greater yes rise up. But Pastor, I'm not sure. There's so many uncertainties. Guess what? I know. <laughs> I know about uncertainty, but I know one thing. Andre said, God has got my back. Yeah. And I may make mistakes and God says, you blew it here, but I'm going to keep walking with you. Get up and keep walking. That's right. I love what he said about detours. I have taken, man, I have taken so many detours in my life, it's not even funny. Sometimes it's the same seat. I said, haven't I passed this foolish tree before? <laughs> haven't I gone this way before? But guess what? Every time around that mountain, I learn something more. You get discouraged, but hey, God is teaching. God is showing. God is developing. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So don't get discouraged. So you're taking a lap around the mountain. So what? You'll get there a little bit later, but you're going to get there. I'm not encouraging you to take a lap. But if you take that detour, God's going to take you around one more time to show you that one thing that you keep missing, then let's take that walk again. Because you're only going to get better. Amen? Yes. Oh, you're going to get excited. That's right. You know, every time I come here on a Sunday, 
I'm excited about what God's going to do. I love it when I see that, 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 that the wine is running out. We have so many people here today. That's a good thing. <laughs> Amen? That's a good thing. That's one of the little stresses. Oh my God, we're running out of the bread. We're running out of the bread. That's the way I don't stress out about it. Just go get it. Amen? Those are the good stresses in life. You know? But God is so good. God is so good. And each, do you know what's really cool? I look at each and every one of you, and each and every one of you has a great guess. Each and every one of you has a call to be here, to be doing something for God. Everyone, Serafina, everyone, every one of our kids, every, you're not here by accident. And I'm going to close with this, but you know what the problem is? You're very stubborn. <laughs> Amen. 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 We're very stubborn. We, the Bible says that we're a stiff neck and a rebellious people. Yeah. You know, God says, I'll always reach out my hand, but you're pushing away. Yeah. Let's not push yeah. his hand away. Let's do what God calls us to do. He whispers. You know what happens, though? He whispers in a wee small voice. And sometimes we are so busy and the enemy has us so distracted, we don't hear the whisper. Because God will never raise his voice. I will. But God does when he whispers to me, it's, it, it, it's, in, it's in the deepest time, it's in the quietest time where I just hear that, I'm still here. Do you trust me? I'm still here. Do you trust me? You need to say yes or no. But if you say yes, you better get ready to walk in. Because God will not let you stay where you are. Let's all stand. Brother, thank you for ministering on that this morning. And that song kills me. Every time, there's, if, if there's a song that centers me, 100% right close man, in a hurry, it's that kind of glory song. Say yes. yes. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this house. Father, we know, Lord, that you you have our back. Father, each and every one of here, Lord, you have our back. The very hairs of our head are numbered by you. Father, you care for us. Father, you, you encourage us to cast our cares upon you. Father, there is no reason why we can't give you the bigger yes. There is no reason. Because you take our burdens, you take our cares, you take everything from us. And you carry them for us. Father, help us, Lord, to not be so distracted by the enemy's questions. But what if? But what if? It's never about what if. It's only about what is. And Father, you are what is, present tense. You have our back. You have our past, our present, our future. You have everything in the palm of your hand. Father, help us, Lord, to trust you in a greater way. To turn our eyes and surrender everything over to you. Anything that's required, Lord, speak it to our spirit and let us be faithful in turning those things over to you. Father, as we leave here today, Lord, bless this congregation. Make them the head and not the tail. Cause them to be above and not beneath, O oh God. Father, grant them traveling mercies as they leave this place. And Father, as always, let there be a divine appointment to tell somebody about Jesus Christ this week. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' wonderful name, will we all say? Amen. 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 Have a great week, Lord.